Hi guys, welcome to today's session. Thank you all for your responses on yesterday. And our yesterday's quiz question was regarding International Energy Agency. It is an autonomous organization, hence do not work under the ambit of UN. And uh, India is an associate member to it, not a full member. So the answer is neither one nor two. So that is the answer. And now let's start today's session. First question for the day with reference to wisdom program recently seen in the news consider the following statement. Statement 1. It is an initiative by Department of Science and Technology. Statement 2. It provides opportunities to Indian women scientists, engineers and technologists to undertake international collaborative research in premier institutions in the USA. So which of the above statements is are correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and option D neither one nor two so the correct answer here is option C both one and two both the statements are correct it is an Indo-US fellowship for women in science technology engineering mathematics and medicine that is wisdom it is a program of department of science and technology in association with Indo-US science and technology forum this have provided international exposure to several women scientists it aims to provide opportunities to Indian women scientists, engineers and technologists to undertake international collaborative research in premier institutions in the USA to enhance their research capacities and capabilities. Now we are moving to second question with reference to input tax credit consider the following statement. Statement 1. It is the tax that a business pays on a purchase and that it can use it to reduce its tax liability when it makes a sale. And statement 2 under GST rule it is available for any business so which of the above statements is are correct option a 1 only option b 2 only option c both 1 and 2 and option d neither 1 nor 2 and the correct answer here is option a 1 only so guys today we are going to make ice cream this is a special ice cream we will be using less ingredients it's my invention and there is a disclaimer also please don't try this at home all right so ice cream for that we need three ingredients mainly one is milk and secondly vanilla and some sugar also we need we are going to make it in large quantity and we bought this ingredients in bulk for milk i paid rupees 500 in total and out of that rupees 100 is tax and likewise for vanilla i paid rupees 120 tax and for sugar i paid rupees 80 as tax so this 100 120 and 80 adds up to rupees 300 the total tax I paid and that is the input tax means the tax I paid for inputs used in my final output product that is ice cream now I am going to mix all these ingredients and our ice cream is made finally and I made 15 bricks of ice cream then I sold these 15 bricks of ice cream to my customers now I have to pay to the government the tax for these 15 bricks of ice cream which I have sold here in deciding the cost of ice cream, I considered the input cost, the labor cost, the electricity charge of my freezer and such other factors and uh, arrives at a cost of rupees 200 per brick. So I have to pay, uh, just imagine, rupees 450 to the government as tax for this 15 bricks altogether and that is the tax on output or output tax. Here our input tax credit comes into play. In effect, we have already paid tax for inputs used in the ice cream that is milk, sugar and vanilla. Now the government is giving back me that money and I only have to pay tax for the value addition I made. If you take your example, rupees 450 I have to pay as output tax. From that, rupees 300 can be reduced as it is input tax which I already paid. And now for my value addition that is the factors I considered in arriving the price of ice cream are my value addition. I have to pay tax on that value addition things only. So in effect 300 deducting from 450 I finally have to pay rupees 150 only and rupees 300 is my input tax credit. That is the basic concept of input tax credit. It is the tax that a business pays on a purchase and that it can use to reduce its tax liability when it makes a sale. It is not available for any businesses. There are some negative list. And guys, one thing to note, I explained the case of ice cream just as an example 
to make you understand in layman terms actually this food and beverage comes under negative list where a seller cannot claim the input tax credit so take it to understand the concept only and motor vehicles and conveyances food beverages club memberships and others all are exemptions the list keep on changing just go through it to know what all are the current exemptions once upsc asked about a question uh, about the gst exemption things and uh, that is about input tax credit we will now move to last question for the day with reference to national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems nmicps consider the following statements statement 1 the mission aims at establishment of 15 technology innovation hubs across country and statement 2 it will be implemented by the department of science and technology and statement 3 the mission aims to provide free broadband connectivity in coastal regions which of the above statements is or correct option a 1 and 2 only option b 2 and 3 only option c 1 and 3 only and option d 1 2 and 3 so the correct answer here is it is option a 1 and 2 only it is a comprehensive mission which would address technology development application development human resource development entrepreneurship and startup development in cyber physical system and associated technologies cyber physical system means integrate sensing computation control and networking into physical objects and infrastructure and connecting them to internet and to each other examples are like driverless cars that communicate securely with each other on smart roads sensors in the home to detect changing health conditions improving agricultural practices and enabling scientists to address issues arising out of climate change etc and the mission aims at establishment of 15 technology innovation hubs six application innovation hubs and four technology translation research parks and our quiz question for today is recently the department of science and technology has sanctioned rupees 7.25 crore to one iit to establish a technology innovation hub and which iit is this please post your answers in the comment section guys and that's all for today we'll meet tomorrow with another set of questions please post your scores also in the comment section thank you for watching